Hey guys, welcome to Auto Amateur Live. Just getting set up and then uh, we'll get started in a second. Today's gonna be fun. Just getting set up and then we'll get started. Hey guys, welcome back to Auto Amateur, and this is Auto Amateur Live. In the next hour, we're gonna be taking a look at the brake calipers that I've just painted, as well as removing the rear bumper so that I can replace the air filters. I've been uh, sent these K&N air filters uh, to try out, so I'm gonna give it a go. Hot day in Vegas, Brandon, welcome. And uh, hey, Jeremy, it's, uh, it's a little bit of a hot day here in Minnesota, it's at least 60 degrees, which means I'm already getting hot. <laughs> Let's see some of the comments coming in. Happy Friday, Roy. The Wombat Credenza, how are you doing? Uh, and no baby duty. So guys, for those of you that have been sending me messages um, of congratulations, my daughter arrived uh, a week ago today. Was it today? No, we went into the hospital on Friday, stayed overnight. Anyway, she arrived on Saturday. Her name is Grace. Grace Lynn McGrath. Uh, she's gorgeous. She's about seven and a half pounds. She has been good as gold this week. She has been sleeping. She's been eating. The boys, Luke and Adam, have been going nuts, um, welcoming her into the house. It's been really nice. It's almost like the calm before the storm because she's been sleeping so well and the boys have been sleeping in so well. We're just kind of wondering if something's about to just like blow up, <laughs> something's about to go wrong. Um, so we're getting all the sleep we can while we're at it. Thank you, Bill, and uh, thank you, Brandon, for all of the, the thank yous here as well, live. Um, it's just, you know, it's fantastic. I, I love being a dad, and uh, Luke's four, Adam just turned three, two days after Grace arrived. Um, so we've got two toddlers running around, and I'm used to it, like I had a brother growing up. I know how to deal with boys. How do you look after a baby girl? Is it any difference? Is it any harder, any worse? I just, I don't know. Anyway, that being said, thank you to, oh, whoops, thank you to everybody um, for all of your thank yous and your well wishes. And, and my wife, Ruthie's blown away as well. So uh, just, you know, thank you. Now this morning, uh, Grace is going out to a checkup with my wife, Ruthie. The boys are in daycare, our school, you know, for four and three year olds. So I get to play in the garage. I'm so excited. Um, I re recorded a podcast earlier this morning, which is uh, going to drop next week. Uh, earlier this week, I uh, recorded a podcast with Rene from Dutch 911, and uh, that dropped this morning. So I'm excited. You know, it's, it's content creation day. So we're going to get this done later this afternoon. If I've got time, I'm going to go and try and do another video. So what's on the agenda for today? Hold that thought. This is a Ruthie Baker special. Orange juice, bubbly soda water, and real oranges. Spring is here, guys. You have gotta enjoy it while you can. Because summer's coming, and then I'm gonna be hibernating for six to eight weeks. All right. So one of the jobs I attempted uh, just, just like two days before my daughter arrived was painting these brake calipers. There's a video live on my YouTube channel already um, that showed you uh, the DIY, if you will. The car has been sat here now for the best part of a week with the paint curing. And just yesterday, 
My son Luke helped me put some clear coat on. This is uh, VHT, high temperature clear coat, and it, you can get it in all different colors. This one's clear, of course. Um, you get a bit of wanker's cramp, you know, getting it ready. Uh, it's been on for a day. I've done five coats, and today for Friday Drive Live, which I'm gonna be doing on Instagram later on this afternoon, um, let's go take a look at the brake calipers. We're gonna do that first, and then we're gonna remove the rear bumper live in real time here in this video. So stay tuned for that, and then we're replacing the air filters. Now, loads of people have been asking me about this brake caliper job, and it's been so much fun to do. And I honestly meant in the video, if anybody lives in the Twin Cities, and once their brake caliper's doing, I will happily oblige, because it was such a fun job. But let's, uh, let's take a look at the finished product. So are they as smooth and as awesome as the factory brake calipers? Well, no, I mean, let's not kid ourselves. This is a $70 DIY job. Um, and I think had I taken the, uh, the wire brush to the caliper a little more, I probably could have got the surface a little smoother. But you know, from, what is this, three feet? They look pretty epic. From five feet, they look factory, right? You can't tell the difference from, the, from there. And so they look so great against the gray of the car. Uh, and now these have had like, you know, four or five coats of clear coats. Uh, somebody actually suggested I should do that the other day, and, and that was the plan. I just didn't want to do it all in one go. And I concentrated mainly over the Porsche decal, which um, I got from a place called Cheeky Chappy Decals, which is in the UK. These are the three-inch version. You can also get a four-inch version if you want to for the bigger brake calipers. Uh, but now they're covered in clear coats, and, uh, you know, they're basically good to go. Let's take a look at the rear caliper sitting slightly differently on the uh, hub on the rotor, sorry. Again, you get up super close. Yeah, they don't look like factory brake calipers. They look like painted brake calipers. Um, but then three feet, five feet. I think they just look great. Super cool, very happy with them. Okay, back to the tripod. So, Today, major job is uh, taking off the rear bumper so that I can do the, the uh, so I can do the, uh, what are they called? The air filters, the air filters. Uh, now, when uh, my car, let me just get my crazy hair under control. Um, when my car went in for the 100,000 mile service recently, that was one of the jobs um, that they recommended. And that was three or four months ago. Uh, and I was like, don't worry about that. I've got it covered, I'm gonna do it. And I never got around to doing it. Uh, and I wanted to do it before we drove to the tail of the dragon and put 3000 miles on the car. Didn't happen. Uh, but no, here we are and uh, I'm gonna be doing it today. But I, I wanted to capture it in a video and I didn't have time to make a real video. So here, we're gonna start doing this um, to the car on this live. And I'm hoping it doesn't take more than an hour. So we're gonna take off the bumper. We're gonna take off the plastic uh, container, the casing that holds the, the two um, air filters in. We're going to replace the air filters and put the casing back on. I may not have time to put the bumper back on, but it's essentially, you know, obviously just a reverse of the job we're going to be doing here. Uh, so that's today. Now, before we get into that, exciting news, more exciting news. Now that I've got my lift back, while a 996 is at Eurocharge Minneapolis being diagnosed, and that video is coming soon as well, I want to make that diagnosis video. Um, and get AJ and the guys there to talk through what needs to be done to the 996. I've got the garage back. I've got my car in the lift, so I'm thinking mods. I've had a few suggestions from people, and uh, here are the first couple I'm gonna be doing. Uh, speaking with Rene at Dutch 911 this week, and uh, we talk about it on today's podcast, if you check out Spotify or Apple or Google, wherever you get your podcasts from, um, he had his steering wheel retrimmed by a company called Royal, in UK, I think it's Royal Steering Wheels or Royal Wheels, something like that. Check out Google Royal Porsche Steering Wheel and you'll find them. Um, for approximately 200 pounds, which is what, $300-ish, uh, you can have your steering wheel rewrapped with stitching of your choice with a notch on the top and apparently the quality is like factory. 
and brand new. And I love the look of my steering wheel, but you know, the car being seven or eight years old now, um, and with 110,000 miles on it, or 106,000 miles on it, um, the leather is pretty tight. It feels pretty hard. Um, it's not as supple or soft as the new steering wheel that I put on my 997. So, God help me do this job properly after stabbing my 997's airbag to death. I'm gonna be removing the airbag, taking off the wheel, shipping it to the UK, uh, FedEx two-day you know, express service. They're gonna put new leather on. They're gonna give me red deviated stitching, guards red to go with my tack face and my seat belts and my sports chrono. And they're also gonna give me a red notch on the top of the steering wheel so I can get rid of the electrical tape. Well, actually, I don't have it, even have it, have it on anymore, but the sort of you know, temporary fix that I had with the red electrical tape. Um, so that's gonna be one job. And then the second job, I've been going backwards and forwards on this for a long time. And it's whether or not I put the aero kit on this car. I said in the beginning when I got the 991, having done so much to the 997, that I was gonna stay true to the 911 silhouette for this 911. And that's still gonna happen. So I'm not putting the ducktail on, but I am gonna be putting the, uh, the sports front bumper on from the aero kit. I found one from LA Dismantler. It's gonna need a bit of love and care to get it back into, um, you know, sort of Porsche quality, factory quality finish. I've got a local body shop lined up to do the work for me. No plastic welding, I think, um, but there are a couple of scrapes. There's a little ding here, that, here and there. And then of course, it's gotta be painted to guards red. I've then gotta put the new grill intakes either side, which won't be able to translate over from the, uh, from the front of my factory bumper. Um, and then I've gotta get the new center air duct. And all of that's available from Suncoast Parts or Gowden Porsche Parts. Um, I'm probably looking at about two, $300 maybe worth of uh, fasteners and plastic grill to make that bumper work. But I'm picking up my bumper for about 500 bucks from LA Dismantler and then painting it as opposed to paying 25 or 2600 from somewhere online, brand new, still the factory bumper, and then still having to get it painted. Now, I'm gonna drop a grand getting this bumper painted and refinished, but I'd be spending that much anyway on the factory bumper getting it painted to match the A gate gray. So I'm probably saving myself about two, maybe $2,200 in doing that. And I'm gonna get myself the, um, I'm gonna get myself the, the sports from bumper all in for about $1,500, $1,600 instead of around $3,000, $3,200. Uh, so I'm pretty happy about that. So that'll be another series of videos that'll be coming soon. I just need Crystal and Sarah at LA Dismantler to send it to me. I mean, I paid for it this morning. Why isn't it here? Okay, I'm calm. All right, let's get on with this job. Stop dicking around. Uh, what are we doing? All right, I'm gonna bring you guys over here. We're gonna get set up, uh, and then we're gonna start, you know, taking stuff apart. Thank you for all the comments. They're still coming in. Fantastic. All right, let's get this job going. Come with me. Da, da, da. Okay, so let's talk around the job a little bit before we get jumped in, before we jump in. I've already raised the spoiler, so this, this is gonna allow me to remove these two pieces of plastic that sit over the two bolts that hold the steering wheel in place. And then I also have got one, two, three, four, or five bolts here that's holding the top of the bumper in place. And then there are two or three around the inner wheel arch. And then, <laughs> Patrick, thank you. I'm actually still using one of the screws here, which was stripped last time. Um, my friend Patrick is good at doing this. So Pat, you might need to come over. I keep joking, but you need to come over. You know the code to my garage, get here. I need help. So two or three screws here on each wheel arch. There's one big screw behind the tail lights, which I've got to remove uh, or bolt, which then keep it flush. And then there are four or five underneath. So basically sit here with me for the next five minutes or so as we chat, as I take out the screws from the back of my car. So of course, this is where the guessing game begins a little bit. And uh, let me just get the lights.
is it going to be a T25 or is it going to be a T27 or a T20? You never know until you try and get it in. All right. Okay, that one feels like a T25, I guessed right. This one was the one that was stripped before though, so I might actually have to do something slightly different with this one. But let's go. So these screws that hold the, uh, the, the, the lights in place are really delicate. They're made of really soft metal. Unlike uh, the fasteners um, around the rest of the car, you know, if you, if, you, um, if you talk these too tight, you've got to cut them out. So don't put them in too tightly. They only need to be, I would say, sort of hand tight, no more than that. Uh, and that way, you're not going to have to do a Pat Douglas and come over and save your mate. Okay, now here's what happened last time. It got threaded and uh, we had to actually use a Dremel to turn that uh, T25 bolt head into a flathead screwdriver to get it out. So there we go. All right. Just do these two quickly as well. That one was also threaded last time. So I'm gonna to need to go and get myself a little flathead screwdriver. Let's see if I can get it out. You guys just stay there for a sec. And note to self, I think I need to order two new bolts. It's clearly not good enough. All right, here we go. So I've, I've done this job about five times now. No, if I think about other 911s that I've done it on, 991s, I've done this job probably about 15 times now. And out of that 15, I would say four of them using mild pressure have had this issue with these uh, screw bolts you know, these bolt heads stripping. So annoying. Uh, all right, both of the bolts out? Yeah. Okay. Removing a headlight, always fun. I like to turn it over, which gives me better access to the clip. And then, Maybe, yep, that's out, whoops. Look at that, I'm knocking my tripod. So, pretty light, done. Let's take out the next one. Trim tool. <sighs> sometimes they want to come out super easily, sometimes they don't. Okay, turn it over, clip. Check this out. For anybody following my, uh, my rap saga. Look, 
More blue wrap. God damn it. Don't get a wrap. Don't get a wrap. Okay, we've got four more bolts across the middle here. Let's do those quick. T25s again, I think. Oh no, that one's bigger. That one's bigger. Maybe a T27. Yeah. Super easy to get this part of the bumper off. Okay, now let's go to the side. I'm gonna show you. These are the sort of biggest, heaviest duty bolts uh, in the job. Right here. And these are T30, I think. Let's give it a go. They basically hold everything to the car. You do not want to forget these bolts. I'll go and do the other one real quick. Okay. Now we've got some fasteners. Give me one second. So, ha, it actually looks like one of the fasteners is missing from the last time the bumper was taken off. And uh, if I remember correctly, that wasn't me. Uh, so we got one, just one fastener here then to remove and then we start going underneath. I mean, I don't want to throw anyone under the bus, but guys, who left a fastener off? And if I'm not mistaken, there's one at the top here. Yeah. Just right underneath here. Interesting trying to do this. I'm trying to stay out of the way of the camera. <laughs> Doing it blind. Um, excuse my head for a second. Okay. Okay. Now, the, uh, the fun and games are gonna continue under the car. So, uh, not wanting you guys to miss out on anything, you are gonna get a view of the underside of my car while I work on it. You see, you guys, 
I am all kinds. I am all kinds of kind like that. I just promise I won't show you a shot of my crotch. Okay, we got the two out from there. Now start coming onto the, uh, the underside by the sole performance. Let's bring you guys a little further along for the ride. One, that's not a fast enough. Two. And then same, look at that gorgeous Soul Performance exhaust, you guys. Soul Performance headers, Soul Performance valve exhaust, and carbon fiber, carbon fiber tips. Pleasant, pleasant shot. Jay Reed, I just saw Jay Reed is in the house. James can say anything on YouTube because he's a Brit. It's true, I can say whatever you like. I can say this morning I woke up with your mother and I said hello and got a breakfast in bed. <laughs> Jay Reed, speaking about your mama. No, let's not go there. Uh, what I will say is, um, you and Nick, Nick Murray, you're in for it. You don't know when it's gonna happen, but uh, it could be at the next Cars and Coffee in Connecticut or wherever it is you live, and you're just gonna turn around and your car is gonna be on bricks and it's gonna be covered top to bottom in auto amateur stickers. How'd you like them apples? It's gonna happen, just wait. It's gonna happen. All right. Uh, just a couple of fasteners to go, so hold on to your horses. Another missing fastener, god damn it. Fast now. It's on the floor. Okay, you guys, what has Jay Reed been saying about me while I was, uh, you know, busy working hard on a Friday? Day off work. <clears throat> All right, let's do this. Let's see where the best angle would be. That'll do. Now, for anyone out there without a backup cam, the only thing you need to worry about is one wiring harness that is right down here before you start taking the bumper too far away from the car. It's a little fiddly to get out. This could be the oops moment you guys are all gonna see live. For those with a backup camera, there's also a second wire that is connected to the camera. So I'm gonna to have to take both of these off before I can actually get this off the ground. And this is where I'm hoping that I've actually taken off all the fasteners. This is live TV. Anything could happen. So far, so good. Okay, so here's the backup cam. Done. And then here's the wiring harness. Oh, this one's always a little bastard. There. 
There you go. On a little tour with me. Button pressed. Okay, here's the bumper. Nine elf in all its glory. And it's amazing how just boring and crappy it looks on the inside. <laughs> uh, but there you go. Rear reflectors. That's obviously where the tail lights go. Um, Is it easy to retrofit backup sensors on a 991 or a camera? Good question. Let's take about that in a second. Um, so as somebody who's done dozens of backup cameras now on 911s, uh, particularly the 991 generation, it is relatively straightforward, um, but it's just a fiddly job. You've got to get to this stage, basically. Drill a hole in the bumper, run the wire all the way under the car and into the cabin. In theory, you can also do aftermarket uh, parking sensors, but you won't get them integrated into the PCM. I think you have to uh, buy the Porsche parking sensors and have the dealer program them into the PCM. If you've got PCM 3.1 or 4.0, you can do that. If you've got PCM 3.0 or earlier, and like the CDR 31, which comes in a lot of the base, um, Cayennes, as an example, you can't do that. Um, Porsche don't have the input for you. So there you go. All right, let's take a look at the back of the car instead of my sweating face. Uh, so here's my wire for the backup camera. Uh, that went through around the heat shielding, but behind the plastic uh, frame here. And then it went up and around the inside of the wheel arch well, and then down along on the underside of the side sills. Uh, you've got your heat shielding here. If your bumper ever melts, it's because you've got an issue with your heat shielding. Um, here's the wiring harness for the rear tail lights itself. Um, here's the back of the frame that protects your engine if you were ever to get rear-ended. You know, a touch wood, that never happens. Um, here are my gorgeous carbon fiber tailpipes that need cleaning. Uh, and then here's your airbox. Now, if you're a 997 owner or a 996 owner, you have the joy of just being able to open your deck lid and seeing the single air filter. With the 991, they hit it below the bumper. You've got this um, cover on top of the engine so you can't see down into the engine. Uh, and now we've got to remove not one, but two air filters by taking out these bolts around the side of the plastic here and then putting the air filters in. So that's the next job. Um, I'm not sure if there's anything else that's really interesting to see here, of course. Uh, we've got engine mounts. And then, of course, we've got, you know, the gorgeous exhaust. What more do you want from me? I'm an amateur. There's probably loads that I could have shown you, <laughs> but I just don't know about them. So... Let's start removing these bolts. And I'm guessing these are T27s. That's a T30. That's a T20. Somebody the other day commented that I have these lovely Milwaukee attachments attached to this cheap as crap uh, Makita drill. And that's because my impact driver from Milwaukee died. So here it is. All right, T27s, let's go.
There's always one more. Okay. I think, I think that's it. Yahoo! There we go. So let's take a look at one of these. These air filters look quite clean on this side until you turn them over and you start to bend through them and you can just see how much shite is between them. So these probably should have been replaced a good six months ago, but uh, here it is. <clears throat> so take a look down my holes. <laughs> um, there's the plenum. And that you can upgrade that on the outside and get yourself an extra couple of horses. Um, the air gets sucked in here, of course, from up above. And then there are other, um, there are other filters here that you can also um, change, but uh, I don't have the parts for those today, so we're not gonna do that. So what I do need now are the K and N air filters that I've been given. And I say I've been given, a friend bought these for me, wanting them to try them out. They haven't been donated to me by the company, so I'm not endorsing this product. I don't actually know how, how good they are. But just like the others, they sit in here. Oh, pushed in too far. And apparently the good thing about these filters is that they are lifelong filters. You get a lifelong guarantee, which means that the next time these need changing, it's just a question of actually power washing them and letting them dry and reapplying some uh, oil. Well, don't quote me on the oil, um, but whatever the grease is that sits on them. So you can use these again and again. I'm personally not a fan of those lifetime sort of guarantees. So these are gonna do me for another 5,000 miles or so. And then I'm probably just gonna go back to the Porsche OEM ones. But they are supposed to give your engines a little bit of an extra err, which is always fun. Because I like a bit of extra err. So there are two clips on the bottom here I've just gotta line up. And then I can put the air box back together. do those super tricky ones at the bottom last, I think. And I'm trying really hard not to over torque these because good old Porsche screws like to strip. <laughs> Probably should have got an extension, but I'm a scouser. We just get on with it. In. That's it, guys. Air filter's done. Now I've just got to put the son of a bitch back together and uh, call it a day. But if you want to hang around and watch me put the bumper back on, you are more than welcome to. If you've got a bail, I understand. And for those like watching near misses, <laughs> this is where things can also start to go a bit wrong. <clears throat> now, speaking of Mr. Jay Reed, while I'm doing this, let's have a bit of a chat as well. Jay and I have decided to go back to the Tale of the Dragon. If you look on my website, you'll see a full 
uh, you'll see a four tour, uh, tour schedule. And that is me and Jay going back to the Dragon for more. It's going to be September 30th is the day we arrive. And we're going to be there till October 3rd. We're going to arrange at least one social. Uh, Jay, you're on. Tell them, will you, while I work. There's going to be one social probably on the Friday night, outdoor venue. Uh, there'll be a car meet on the Saturday morning. And probably one on the Sunday morning also. And while we're going to try and have it like cars and coffee, uh, we're also going to be... Um, we're also going to be going for a drive, like group drives. So if you're interested, come out. Instead of me bending down, why don't I just raise the camera? That's better. That's better. All right, let's do this. Now, we disconnected the wiring harness, so we've got to remember to connect the thing back. And doing it one-handed, it's fun. You know, it's just, it's that extra little bit of accomplishment you feel. Done. All right. I'm going to connect the backup camera last. Now, actually, for anyone still watching, when you want to put this back on, um, you've got to make sure that the, uh, you start from the outside and then work your way around because this bumper actually sort of clips on behind here. So that seems to be in place. You've also got to make sure You've got this over your heat shielding correctly. Okay. I always like to start by putting the T30 bolts back and uh, that just holds everything together nicely. You see, you may have noticed what I'm trying to do with these live videos is to get them done in an hour. Because that's easy for me as a dad to come into the garage for an hour and then disappear. Um, back into the house again. It's sort of enough viewing time, I guess, for people who are interested without boring you to death. Plus, if you can do this kind of job in an hour, get on with it, have a go. Wiring harness is in the way. Okay. 
Oh, of course it will be the side that I choose to do first then. There's a pig to get back in. There we go, come on. See if this side is any more forgiving. Look at that, that went straight in. Little bastard. Now, one thing you might note on the forums is that people that take out the tail lights occasionally have a hard time lining them up so they're straight. There are two screws on the top of the base here, um, which go up and down before you put your bolt in. And as long as you don't touch those, they will just go back in the same way they came out. And here, this is where I need a replacement bolt, of course. I'm doing this with the, the sort of pseudo bolt the strips head, but you don't need that much tension. So that one's in nicely now. I'm just gonna have one more go. I'm trying to align this one properly. Maybe put that bolt on just a hair too tight. That's better. That's better. Yeah, I had that, that bolt on on the side just a little too tight, which meant that it wasn't leaving the little hole open for the slide to go in properly. And then four more across the top.
Now, let me show you, uh, I was just talking about the fact that you can get your tail lights in wonky. Let me show you uh, what I mean by that. So I don't know if you noticed, when I was playing around with this one earlier, I twisted the screws and brought them down a little, thinking that that was the issue that was stopping me from getting the, the light in. And it, it wasn't actually, it was that this bolt here was, uh, this bolt here was too tight. Now I've put this back in and you can see, because I've, because I've um, created less space between the fastener and uh, the bolt housing, when I've tightened this bolt, it's actually lifted the light up ever so slightly from the body. Now, if we look at the exact same light on the other side, you can see that it's, it's different. So it's not too different right now, but when the lights light up at night, you, you'll probably be able to tell. So I just need to go back and let's, let's see if we can tell. There and there. You can see there's a difference. That one's basically flush. And this one is not. So as I put this back together, I'm gonna to go back and just uh, tinker with that headlight a little bit more. Um, put the rivets, or the fasteners underneath at the back. There were four of those there. A couple in the wheel arch. And then that's it, essentially done. Uh, and then I've got to put the wheels back on. And then this afternoon, I'm not sure what time, maybe around five o'clock Eastern, which will be 10 o'clock GMT. Um, I'll be doing Friday Drive Live uh, on Instagram in the car with the wheels back on. And uh, it's all gonna be fun. Did I say headlights? I meant taillight, whatever. Uh, well, thanks for checking in guys. More content coming soon, despite having a little wee baba there in the kitchen sucking away. Um, I'm still at it, I'm still on the grind. Thanks for checking in, I'll see you in another video soon, bye.